Hello, MMA lovers. I am Jason Burgos for SureDog.com, and I am joined by a man all the way from England who upset some big plans in the Bellator heavyweight division this past week over in Israel. At Bell 2 234, he went into the main event against Sergey Karatanov, the hottest heavyweight in the promotion outside of champion Ryan Bader. And this man lived up to his moniker and straight swarmed the Russian right. in route to a second round TKO victory. And that man is Linton Vassell. Linton, my man, what is up? Thanks for giving me some time after that Thanks. massive win. Of course, of course. Always got time. Yeah, um, I'm still, still buzzing. Seriously, still high. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it was a good, good event in, in Tel Aviv. It was nice being out there, but obviously, you know, I got the result that I wanted. Mm -hmm. When, when we talked last time, it, it was after you made the decision to move to heavyweight and we talked about, you know, the pros and, and the cons of the decision of, and now of oh. course we were going to get to the Caratana yeah. fight uh, without a doubt, but I want to get a little more context leading up to this particular fight because you did make your, your heavyweight debut in March and you, you, you know, lost some unanimous decision to Valentin Moldovsky looking yeah. back on that fight and the camp for that one. And was there a learning experience that helped from that fight, the first heavyweight fight, that helped for this wing? You know, yeah. on the broadcast at, at uh, this past weekend, they mentioned how you've been working on heavyweight and, and getting the right size to prepare yeah. for for over a year. But were there lessons learned from that fight and, and like, say, nutrition, strength and conditioning that made you better going into the Caritano fight? Yeah, 100%. Pretty much. Um, so, obviously, I was fighting like heavyweight for, for a long time. Mm -hmm. And then I just... Decided, obviously, you know, made the choice to go to heavyweight. So Modoski was, yeah, my first, my first heavyweight fight. Um, I just thought it was a good idea if I sort of weighed, and and I was the biggest guy in there. So I came in at two forty seven, mm. um, and I've never weighed that that in my life. You wow. know? So it was a bit of a silly, silly thing to do to go into the fight that heavy. Obviously, trying to carry that much weight. Um, and yeah, I wouldn't say I was injured, but I couldn't do any running. Mm, okay. So I was doing other stuff, but now I look back at it, I wasn't doing what I should have done. Mm. Um, again, not taking nothing away from Modoski. He beat me. You know, I felt I felt fit in that fight. You know, I only had I guess two rounds in me. Um, but yeah, I was I was just too heavy. Mm. He 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 got the win. Fair play to him. And then me and the coaches. My team went back and we sat down. And we said, "Jay, you're too big, you know, <laughs> too big." Yeah, no, that is real. You know, yeah. you're too big. Yeah. Let's change a few things up. Come in for this next fight. Um, whoever it's going to, you know, about two thirty, two four. That's right, about okay. two thirty five, two forty. And I had from March, I uh, took March. Um, yeah, it was March. So from March up till now, to find a good weight, mm. train, nutrition you know, conditioning and get my body to be training for obviously for heavyweight fights and heavyweight people. And obviously we had some big guys, we got some yeah, big guys yeah. training with us as well. So I felt like I felt good leading up to that fight, but I felt amazing for this one. Mm. So it was a it was a life lesson I feel like obviously I needed. I wish I didn't, but I feel like if I didn't have that then right. It may it might have happened now, and I felt felt like this fight was a much bigger fight. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, you know, um, things happen for a reason, and I wasn't losing four in a row. <laughs> it, it would have seriously, it would have to have killed me. Yeah, I say he was not winning. It was like. I was going out with my shield. I was not going to lose that fight. <laughs> and that's what I wanted to ask you. That perfectly goes to the next question because, I mean, you did lose three in a row. It's a good competition, yeah. though. Moldovsky's a rising I talent. Know. Phil yeah. Davis, former champ, Ryan Bader. Was there yeah. a pressure about, like, you? were you thinking, damn, man, this could put my job in jeopardy. It'd be two in a row at 205, two in a row heavyweight. Did yeah. you have that fear or did Bellator say, look, Linton, that's not a problem. Don't worry about that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, well, they didn't say nothing like that, so oh. I didn't hear nothing from them saying like that. But, yeah, obviously, fighting Ryan Bader and Phil Davis, obviously, I know they're, they're top top level um, light heavyweights. Um, so, going to the Modoski fight, obviously, I was confident I was going to win that. Mm. Obviously, didn't get the win, so I was thinking, yeah, I'm probably going to get cut um, soon. I, I didn't. They gave me one more chance. Um, but yeah, I've never never lost two fights in a row, let alone three. Yeah. So yeah, I did have I did have pressure definitely. Does it change um, training? That... Do you feel more anxiety going to the fight? It, no, it... no, it was it was the pressure that motivated me. Okay. It, seriously, I wasn't sitting there moping about 
all upset, thinking I'm gonna lose my job. Motivated me to be like, people are gonna think I'm a pussy right now. Seriously, because <laughs> like this, I can't be gassing. I can't be getting tired yeah. of the fight. I yep. feel like to lose a fight, you need to be beaten up by the guy who's better you, not not right. from getting tired. So obviously, for me, that was embarrassing. Um, and yeah, obviously, I took that fuel with me, and you know, um, just worked, worked, worked. So yeah, that brought, brought brought that fire with me. Now, con- considering the circumstances going into this Caraton fight, Sergey's on a hot streak. You know, his resume yeah. at heavyweight is very good for a long, long time. You know, this being your second fight in the division, we mentioned. Yeah. You know, the, going into it on the losing streak, were you? And the the fascinating thing about this, you were not a big underdog for the betting odds. First, yeah. did you know about that going in, and and was that a confidence boost in terms of like the odds makers know how really, really good and dangerous you are, considering Sergey? his resume and second when the fight was booked what did you like about it from your perspective this particular matchup with Caritano yeah so I didn't know about the odds I, didn't, I, I like to not really look at social media like the, especially on the day because yeah. you've, got, you've got so many things going around your head you don't want to sort of get all that into you, into you so I didn't really know about the odds until after but I, but I had a feeling I was definitely the underdog right. especially losing three fights right and the way he was, you know, obviously knocking people out. Um, and they were saying before that he's probably going to fight for the title. Mm-hmm. So but when, I, when I got the call, I was surprised. I really didn't think I'd be fighting him again. Hmm. I thought, you know, I'd be fighting, obviously, someone else could come up the rankings. But that's, that's the fight they offered me. And I've been watching him. Um, and Matt Mitchell is one of my teammates. Mm-hmm. And I saw, like, the success he had before, obviously, you know, it went right. the other way. Yeah. And... I, I knew my, my ability, you know, I was, I was going to be the faster and I've got a great ground game. So, you know, when, when I was given the fight, I went back to my coaches, we spoke and they said it's a, it's a perfect matchup. Obviously, he's a, he's a big, strong guy. Mm. If he hits you, you know, you've got to be ready and, yeah. you know, um, we worked all around that. But yeah, but I had a great, great game plan and I couldn't have ex- executed it better, seriously. And I'm Every, the... went, everything and I... went to plan. I'm glad you brought that up because that's that's where, where yeah. I was going to next because, you know, for this fight itself, essentially you dominated him. You know, this is a guy yeah. who had won six in a row, you know, 30 and eight yeah. career record. You know, like you said before, he was the number one contender. Even before this fight, he was like the yeah. number one contender. You did, did you expect it to go as well as it did? You, did you figure there'd be a little bit more resistance than it seemed to be? Yeah. And what was the, the game plan like going into it? Because I noticed the first round you did a lot of calf kicks, which I'm a huge calf kick fan. Love those. Yes, hey, that's money. <laughs> <laughs> Car kicks is money. Yes. That's, that's the best yep. ever thing to do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, obviously, I, I, again, I watched his fights, mm-hmm. but again, no disrespect. I didn't know who he was before because I, I wasn't, I was pretty late getting into MMA watching. Mm-hmm. So I was more like Chuck Liddell, Randy Couture. Right. And that, that's who I got. Yeah. That's who I. Um, found as fighters, that's what I asked him first. So when they were like, oh, Karatonov's been fighting Pride, Veteran, blah, blah, I was like, I've not seen his fights. <laughs> I, I only knew him from the Bellator oh, okay. when he came to Bellator. So I felt like that was a little less pressure. But again, I knew he was dangerous. So yeah, um, for me, um, and when we spoke, the game plan was keep it long. You know what I mean? Spoil, spoil his game. Because he likes to, you know, um, walk you down. Mm-hmm. Trap in the corner, throw them uppercuts. Mm-hmm. For me, my game is keep it long, car kicks, takedown, and pretty much yeah, it, it went went to plan. I did I did expect him to, um, you know, um, it w- wouldn't go as 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 planned like that. I thought it'd be you know um, a bit more more hard work. <laughs> yeah. Not saying it wasn't, you know, what I mean, not saying it wasn't, yeah, but of course, yeah. yeah. Um, but just just the way it worked was I couldn't I couldn't have asked for a better fight. That the announcers praised your strength during the fight, and and we talked about it months back in working with you know legit yeah. heavyweights like you mentioned, Matt Mitrione at Hard Knocks three six five. You work with Struve in the past, uh, Maori right now, and another monster yeah. guy, t- t- monster. top prospect. Grappling isn't his strength, but he you know he has solid grappling. He has some submissions on his resume. When grappling yeah. with him, did you feel you were the stronger man? And and on a, did you feel there was a big technical gap between you two as well? Yes, I really did, because. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a guy called um, um, Gerard, I can't say his name. He, he, he's, gonna, he's fighting um, 
what's his name? He's fighting Overeem next. Oh yeah, Jairzino Rosenstrike. Like, rotten <laughs> like an ox. Seriously, <laughs> and he was my training partner. Oh for wow. Whole eight weeks. Yeah, he's strong. Nasty. Seriously, it's hard yeah. to take down, and he's super strong. I can't submit him. Like, he's a super strong. Um, obviously, not take away from his striking. He's an awesome striker as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, I. That's what I was training with. So I was expecting that kind of strength when when I grappled with um, um, Sergio, but it wasn't it wasn't the same. Mm. I grabbed him and I was pretty much able to take take him down wow. and you know um, work work my positions and stuff. Um, so I don't know if it was because I was working with my man. It just you know it came all together. Mm. But yeah, I just didn't feel that you know he, um, his his win was obviously like you know his strongest point. Right. Um, you have some big wins on your resume, you know, Soka Ju, Emmanuel Newton, Lee McGeary, you know, two former yeah. champions about tour. Is this the biggest win of your career because of everything leading up to it? And is it like the biggest win by far? Yeah, yeah. easily. Mm. Yeah, easily. Yeah. Like, um, again, just look at his resume, you know, yeah. he's fought top, top boys yep. pretty much for his whole career. So, yeah, definitely my my, my biggest win. I'd even say my, my best fight today as well. Is it fun to to upset the plans for the heavyweight title situation? Because like oh, of course. <laughs> like I mentioned earlier, you know, he was number one contender for sure. Yeah. Even it and what's funny too is the announcers were talking about when you got him down the first time saying like, Oh, Bader's probably watching this, he's gonna take yeah. cues from them, just assuming yeah. Well, yeah, he'll get you at some point and I, then I still heard, fight yeah. Bader. Yeah. You know, it, you know, is it fun that you did this? You upset the apple cart, so to speak, and in a way, should a guy like Josh Barnett give you a shout out and a thank you? Because now if he wins next month he he's, has a good chance of getting a title shot exactly yeah definitely I, i'd like to <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah, um but yeah uh yeah i felt like i was i was definitely the underdog and getting written up a little bit like mm-hmm. um because yeah when i was listening they were like if he gets out then obviously you know it's bad for linton linton i should have gone for that shot you oh know, so you can um, hear them talking that's, that's while you're their, fighting that's their opinions yeah you know um again but yeah i, I love upsetting upsetting people and mm-hmm. you know um, letting them know that I'm not, I'm not here just to be a number. You know what I'm saying? I'm not here just to be a number, man. So don't 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 write me off. Could you hear the announcer? You heard the announcer talking while you were grappling with him? No. Oh, okay. I heard it. I've watched it back. Oh, so, okay. okay. I'll, I'll, I'll then, yeah. Now, coming off of this big win, you know, the obvious question is, what's next? You know, months back... When we talked the first time, you told me Mitrion and Czech Congo are no goes because you're friends with them. You've trained with you know Mitrion yeah. and stuff like that. Would you like in that case an established name next, like a Frank Mir, Roy Nelson, yeah. Vitaly yes. Menikov, or, or, or all the names? <laughs> oh, you know, all, all the names. Seriously, well, um, a Fedor fight. I'd, I'd love that as okay. well. I know he's fighting Rampage next, yeah. but you know, what I mean, he, he's, he's a legend in the game. I've always said I'd, I'd, I'd like to fight. Yeah, all the names you just named. Frank Mears has come off a big win as well, a mm-hmm. big country. So yeah, um, again, I'm, I'm I'm not here to be a number, so I'm I'm here to to fight them all, and obviously get that title fight at the end. Would there be a preference though in, in something like that because they're a bigger name, or if you would you be interested if they came with something different, like you get to derail the hype train of somebody maybe that they got a lot of marketing behind, like a, a Javi Ayala, Terrell Fortune, Jake yeah. Hager. Would those still appeal to you, or you want like a a former champion, big name, you know, that kind of thing. Bit of, a bit of big name, man. I feel like that, that's a map now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like I've been in this game for a long time. Um, 14, 14 years nearly. So, yeah, I, I'd love, love a big name, man. I feel like that's, that's, that's what I need next. Now, one of the things that the, the broadcast continually showcased during your fight was that you had family in the crowd. Was Is that something a little different than the norm? Were they mainly there because they're in the UK, they can go to Israel easy? Are they often at your fights in America, or was this kind of a special occasion? No, nah, they're always there. My mom and okay. my sister, always. All, every fight they can they can make, that they will be there. I think maybe they've missed one fight, mm. I think, ever in my life. Does um, it feel maybe weird? Maybe two, but sorry. When they're not there, because they're they're there all the time, is it like a, a letdown? Is it like ah, it's it's it, it, it's a take away from something a little bit because um, that's you know part of the routine for you, them being there. No, no, uh, no, nah, it didn't. <laughs> I trying to think. I think it was like the Francis Carmont fight, maybe as it comes to. Okay. But what I remember back, it, you know, I won that fight as well, so I would I would have said nah, it, it it played a part. But yeah, they were always there um, to support one hundred percent. 
Now, I always like to end the, the, the interviews, and I haven't done it with you yet in terms of like finding more a, about the person, away from fighting, because I've talked yeah. to so many fighters, and they, you know, they talk about the mental stress of a camp and what you got to go through, and you kind of have to do things to kind of settle and diffuse and get away from fighting at times. Now, yeah. we've talked in the past about, you know, we both love like comic book movies and those kind of superhero Love movies them. and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, we can talk about that. You could tell me some other passions, you know, things you like to do that have nothing away from, from, from fighting. Like, what are some of the things you like to do when it, that just is not fighting related? Well, you must must not have reptiles. I don't know, or I've seen them on mm. social media. Mm. So I'm always in that reptile shop. Playing favorite, what's your favorite uh, species? What, what do you like to go like, with? I, lo I, love I love snakes. I have two okay. snakes. I love um, geckos as well. Um, but yeah, so snakes are my, my favorite. Mm -hmm. And then that definitely goes into like the lizard family. Um, I love geckos. Bearded what is the snakes, appeal? What do you like snakes. about them that you? I'm like honest, to like... <laughs> I, really, I just like them. Like, I guess like like how people like dogs or cats. Mm. Is <laughs> like, it was it something you've always felt like that since a kid, or it's like when you got into grappling and you felt like you, there's a connection with the snake and it's ability yeah. to wrap around and try. Hey, it, does, does, yeah, it does wrap around me. Um, <laughs> I just, my friend had a snake. Um, and I looked after it for a couple of months, mm. and then I don't know. Ever since then, I was like, I like snakes. And then mm. it wasn't till I moved to to Florida, yeah. I was like, Yeah, let me get get my own snake. Mm. And one turned to two. You know, I have again, I have, I have four reptiles. Um, obviously, you know, um, the list will get bigger. <laughs> <laughs> when know, when you yeah. have when you have company over, are, are they like, Oh, snake? Are they scared? Yes. Or do you have to kind yeah. of like Can you hold the time. them? Not all the time. <laughs> yeah. but yeah, people are a bit like, oh, snake, uh, you know, and some people like, you know, like to hold them and that, so, mm -hmm. you know, um, I get a bit, bit of both, both feedback. Some people hate them, some people love them. Now, the other obvious question, because we talked about comic book movies and stuff like that, have you purchased Disney, a Disney Plus subscription yet? Are you going to wait till those shows come out? I'm going to wait till the shows come out. <laughs> like, you, know, you, know, you know I'm going to be watching some of them. What was it? You... There's Loki, Loki, and there's uh -huh. Vision and Wonder. Yep. Who's Loki with? Is it Loki? No, it's just Loki by himself. He it's Wind Wind Wind. Okay, the, oh, I don't know. It's yep. Winter Soldier, isn't it? Yeah, and, and Falcon. And Falcon, yeah. So when they when they start airing, that's that's when I'll get it. Is there one that you're more just excited about seeing than the other? Yeah, I want to see the the Wonder Vision because she's some powerful witch. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think they've used her, and so's Vision. They've yes. not used them like they should. Mm -hmm. So hopefully they, you know, I feel like it was a little. For me now, in, 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 uh, was it Infinity War? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to know what happened. Nothing. Yeah, he got stabbed up a couple of times. That was it. Died. <laughs> you know, so hopefully they, yeah, you know, they they bring him out. And I heard one starts going crazy. Yeah, yep. It's gonna and, go into Doctor Strange yeah, too. Yep. See that? Yep. That's what I'm waiting for. Yep. 